Wednesday, October 16th, quick minute video for you wonderful ladies and gentlemen. Market did bounce. The breath was okay, not super impressive, but better than it's been the last couple of days. VIX, however, was not able to get back below the 19.36. We did get a little relief in rates, which is always helpful, and TLT is showing some signs of life, and we did see some rebounds in NVIDIA. I was a little kind of concerned that Apple wasn't able to maintain the breakout. It had that look above and fail, and then today had continuation on the downside. You really do need all cylinders firing for this market to really take off here. SPY is still leading the Qs, and the Qs are still leading SMH. And I'm looking at the ES today. We were able to repair yesterday's underwater close to 58.33 quarter. The Qs, however, were not, and that would have been 20,447.75. And the Qs do seem like they're trapped between that 20,263.75 to 20,381.75 range. For any further traction here, bulls need to get up over there or players need to get it down below there. As far as the ES goes, I think it's sort of all right here. I'd be better with it over 58.33 quarter. I'd be better still over today's lower high from the last three days at 58.92.75. You probably can see where I'm going with this with three days with lower highs. We're technically one time framing to the downside on two days. I wouldn't make that big a deal of it just yet, but something to note. As far as SPY goes, I had talked about it getting up to the channel high yesterday we had the pullback today we have a dubstep situation i think if you're long you could either use yesterday's low at 584.90 as a stop or if you want to use today's low of day at 582.83 as a stop i'm good with that i think the bulls are getting a little bit narrow here in terms of the rising wedge i do think that there could be the assault on 600 but i would sort of think that's maybe null and void if we started getting below 574.71 and the 20 MA at 573 and 31 and rising. As long as that 10, 20 MA ish area does hold, it's still fine. If that were to falter, we'd probably come down to 565.16 and then we'd see that was the real breakout, of course, over the 716 high. As far as Qs go, we filled the 716 gap to the 496.34 and got the wet rich high, pulled back. We're kind of okay here as long as the 20 ma holds i'd give it actually to the 78.6 at 46.39 up to 47.31 anything above there to me is still okay i'd feel better if we were able to get up over the highs and you started seeing things like apple breaking out apple had been looking good but it did have the look above and fail over the reference highs 237.23 and we got 237.49 technically it should quote unquote pull back into the 520s but I don't stand on ceremony here. If we did get back up over 233, I think that the assault back on 237.23 would be in play. And if we were to do channel high, if we were to do it tomorrow, I mean, it would seem unlikely it'd be 250, 256. If we were to do it on the earnings day, it could take you back up to the old all-time highs at 261.19. Lines up pretty perfectly there. With regard to NVIDIA, it got slammed yesterday on ASML blowing up on now, a couple of crappy quarters. I've been on record saying stay away from ASML and stay away from SMCI, which also has accounting issues. If you want to play this space, play NVIDIA, and that has turned out to be correct. I think as long as you're above, let's say, low of day now, 131.58, it's fine. If we are able to get up over and stay up over high of day at 136.62, we probably do pop up and tag the 140.76. If we were to make it up to the channel high, depending on how many days it takes to get there, it'd be somewhere in the 148s to 150. Interest rates are cooperating. I had talked about TLT back up over the 200 MA, and once it cleared, it was able to go higher. We're stalling a little bit on the 100 MA here. I see the downtrend lining up perfectly with the 20 MA, currently 96.62 and falling. So if we do keep going, I think that could be the resistance. I'd start getting concerned if we got back below the 10 MA here at 94.83, particularly if you're long, but the bears really do need to crack the 200 MA at 94.13 to get real downside momentum again. As far as Bitcoin goes, still consolidating here. I liked it as long as we were above 66,233. That of course keeps the 70,825 in play. Seems like we could have a little bit of a potential secure high here. I'd feel better over 68,150 for new money longs, but up here, I think it's just gonna consolidate. Maybe there's some pullbacks, but I still like buying dips is because we do have a trend break. As far as real gold goes, not just the digital one, did have a bit of a potential gravestone doji up here, but not making too much of it because it's technically a trend break also. 
I would feel much better as long as we could stay up over 247.37. We had talked about 248.36 being the 2.618 extension, so we are naturally seeing some sellers up there. If it were to make it up to the magenta channel high, that'd be 252.50. So if you're playing with calls, you might want to make it spreads and cap it off somewhere up in those 250s. Tesla is still not exactly lighting the world on fire post robo-taxi event. If anything, it's just consolidating and a bit of a bear flag. I'd feel better with that one, I think, back up over the 226.50-ish area. If it does, then maybe we get a gap fill to the 238.77, but I'm thinking it could come down to the 200 MA at 201.82 and maybe a trend touch if the earnings aren't so great at 195.60. We know their deliveries were disappointing, so I can't imagine the earnings being all that amazing either. I was keeping an eye on JP Morgan because that was really the first to get this off on the earnings foot. And it also, again, found responsive sellers at the 225.48. We haven't made a new high just yet, but it is consolidating up there. And I think that that's encouraging. If it were to clear that 225.48, channel high could be 235.50 or two times range is at 232.56. So somewhere up in that range, I would be looking to book gains. The big Megilla, of course, is going to come on Thursday with Netflix. I like that it's a little bit down into earnings. I'd like if it was even more down into earnings. But for me, it's got to hold this 700-ish area. If it doesn't, it probably pulls back to somewhere between 671.86 to 678.97 and possibly more. But as long as it's above 700, I think you could stay long. Uh, if the earnings are good, obviously the stock would go higher. I, for me, it didn't pull back enough, really. This is just a check back to the breakout. I think you could put on some kind of a call spread if you wanted to do it here. But for me, it's not enough off the highs. I mean, 36 points on a $700 stock isn't really doing it for me. Generally speaking, markets are a little bit stretched here. I've been a little leery that the SPY has been leading Qs and that Qs are leading SMH. I think that NVIDIA strength could keep the market higher. And if Apple can get back up over those 233s, I think that that doesn't become a drag anymore as well. There does seem to be some intraday and day-to-day -day rotation between the big cap tech stocks and all the other stuff. So I guess that's a bit healthy, but it doesn't help people who are long calls to see stocks like JP Morgan unable to break out of new highs. It doesn't help when Apple stalls at the old highs. It's responsive selling. So it's not an initiative market, meaning breakouts are taking. It means we're getting back to old highs and traders are taking gains. Traders do what works until it doesn't. So let's wait for those breakouts to chase the momentum. Otherwise, book them at the reference highs. And be sure to like and follow for more.